Welcome to another episode of Curious Mike. I'm here with Peyton Manning. Um, man, it's an honor to have you on here, bro. I, uh, I think I told you this when we met at the arena, um, that I grew up in Indiana. So before basketball, I was playing football as well, playing quarterback. So, you know, you were a big part of my childhood. So it's an honor to have you on here, bro. I yeah, appreciate it. Honor to be here. Man, a lot of people know you from, you know, being on the court. We actually, um, I saw you at our arena playing with your kids, you know what I mean? Um, just shooting around with them. So kind of update us where you are now. What are you doing now off the field and everything like that? You know, it's kind of the second chapter for me. Um, I've tried to kind of pick, say maybe kind of one thing to kind of focus on that year. And then maybe you keep doing it if you like it or maybe you change it up. I haven't really had like this five or 10 year plan. Uh, you know, when you're playing like football, basketball, you pretty much know where you're gonna be every day all year right and that, that's the biggest change about this next chapter but I didn't want to sign up for something to be a broadcaster to be a coach where I knew that's what I was doing for the next right. five ten years I've just kind of taken it one year at a time uh, don't really have a one-word job description I'm the assistant offensive coordinator on my son's uh, sixth grade football team okay it's a very important role I'm not qualified to be the head coach so I'm just the assistant coach uh, yeah I do some stuff in the TV space Eli and I obviously do this Monday night show. We do. I do it from Denver. He does it from New Jersey. Um, I feel like you know my kids, Ashley and the kids. Uh, that's my number one priority. But I like staying busy. I like staying stimulated. I like my kids seeing me busy, seeing me working. Right. That's important to me. Um, and you know, still get to a lot of sporting events. Get to the Nuggets games. Get to the Broncos games. So uh, you know, I, I'm busy, but but I'm kind of busy on my own schedule, which is a good thing. Right. So a lot of athletes that I know of. Um, you know, once they retire, they kind of have sometimes like an identity crisis right. or a midlife crisis. Did you at all deal with that or did you um, like and kind of how did you work your way through, you know, that time going from, you know, stardom right. to kind of being away from the spotlight? Was it hard for you at all? Or? No, there's no doubt it's an adjustment, right? Just going back to that earlier point, you know, football, you have a schedule uh, all season, all off season, all of a sudden that stops. Um, you know, the thing. I was fortunate, I got to play football for a long time, and I really got to kind of end it on my terms, which doesn't all, all often, often happen, right? A lot of times in sports, you know, uh, you don't get to retire, you're kind of retired, right? <laughs> they, uh, nobody calls you anymore and says, we want you to come play for the Broncos or the Nuggets. So uh, I was grateful for the time that I got to play. And so, look, you're always gonna miss your teammates. and around playoff time, Super Bowl time, you always miss it a little bit then. I heard Derek Jeter say one time after he retired, great shortstop for the Yankees, he said, you know, if I could parachute into the World Series every year, sure, I'd probably yeah. like to do that. But it's the grind. He doesn't miss spring training, he doesn't miss all that. And so, um, and so I don't miss it either because I got to do it for a long time, but stay in touch with my teammates on a text thread, you suddenly miss seeing them every day. You miss the locker room, you miss the plane rides. So I was just grateful for the time that I had. So I guess in the second chapter, I didn't really look for that. You know, I, I didn't miss, you know, being on the field because I was grateful for the time that I got to do it. Uh, our kids had just maybe turned five years old at the time. So they're getting into school. That was a nice kind of timing to kind of be able to sort of dive into their lives and uh, everything. And so uh, it's, been, it's been a pretty good transition. And uh, I still go to a ton of games. Uh, I think I went to four University of Tennessee games last year, uh, all the Broncos home games, uh, went to the, uh, a couple Colts games, so I, I still find myself kind of hanging around football. How long do you think you could have played, like if it was, like like you said, if you could parachute into the to the finals right now, you <laughs> would, but how long do you, how many more seasons do you think you could have played? Uh, you know, I don't know, I mean, I think everybody could probably always uh, have played one more. Uh, how well are you going to play? is probably a, is a is a uh, is a fair question so I never really looked at it that way um, like I said I got to play 14 years in, in Indianapolis four great years here in Denver still live here wait there was that many today. years in Indy 14 in Indy yeah that makes I me feel, not probably really makes me feel, so how old were you when I was uh, so playing yeah. for the Colts so yeah like I said I, I um I was born in Indiana. A lot of people think that I was born in Missouri, but I really was born in Indiana. I was there till fifth grade. What years? So, what years were you? Um, you? Well, what do you think? How many? What do you think that was? 
2010. Okay. Okay, so that like my whole childhood was indie. I remember they built the Lucas Oil Stadium. There you like, go. I remember all that. There you um, go. I like it. I remember Marvin Harrison, Reggie went, and honestly, like, I was a big football fan growing up. You know, I, I paid attention to all y'all's games. Um, when we moved to Missouri, because we were in Columbia, Missouri, so the uh, the Rams were over here, then you got the Chiefs right. over here. I really didn't pick up on any team, so kind of like my love for football kind of like went away. Stayed with, oh, oh, it did? Um, okay. it, it went uh, away. Like, I paid attention to, to the Colts a little bit, but like, I wasn't in the city, so it Yeah, didn't, when there's not a team in your town. Yeah, so never. it was hard, but... Um, yeah, so no, it was it was uh, like I said, I was grateful for the time that I that I got to play uh, two different places, and you know I just felt like after we just won the Super Bowl, it just felt like it was the right time to stop playing. Uh, I was I dealt with some injuries, um, you know, the, the possibly might have had to go find another team to play for. The Broncos had some quarterback, you know, personnel decisions to make, and didn't really want to go through that process again necessarily. So. Just felt like the right time, and uh, um, I've been at peace with it ever since. I did not realize it was 18 years that yeah. you played. Um, how do you feel like your purpose kind of shifted? Like, um, I feel like even me now in the NBA, kind of like so much of your focus goes to fo uh, to your sport. Right. For you, football. For me, basketball. How do you feel like your purpose and just life in general changed from when you were playing to now, what you're doing now? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, being a being a good dad is kind of my number one. Uh, you know, priority, you know, uh, being a part of um, our kids' lives is important for Ashley. Uh, uh, and I, my parents, you know, my dad specifically, after he retired from football, he was present in our lives, right? He was at our Little League basketball games and, and baseball games and uh, never coached us per se, but he'd come and throw passes with us on the weekends. And so that was important to me. So. Uh, that's kind of been my number one priority. I mean, I, I'll be at a baseball game this weekend. I'll be at a volleyball yeah. game this weekend, right? And, and so I didn't want to sign up for anything that was going to take me away from that. Uh, for the majority, you know, of my football time, um, our kids either weren't born or were quite young. So I, um, I didn't have that potential decision to make. Hey, am I going to go to their, you know, youth football game or am I going to go study some film? And so it was nice not to have to have to choose, right? I wanted to be I want to be a great dad, I want to be a great football player at the same time. And so uh, we, we sort of waited, you know, for that reason. Um, look, I, I enjoy being an ambassador for the game. I enjoy being a resource to young quarterbacks. Uh, I, I saw just this past weekend uh, Josh Allen and, and, and Justin Herbert, and I have their phone numbers. And, you know, I mean, anytime they want to reach out to me with a question, you know, those guys kind of have it figured out. They don't need a lot of my help. But um, I like being able to pay it forward right. because a lot of people helped me when I was a young player, and of course my dad who played, but guys like Troy Aikman, Dan Marino, they, they gave me some tips and pointers when I was a young player. So um, I feel like that's a that's a kind of a cool hat to wear, a little bit of a purpose there. Do you feel like you're still a part of the game, not on the field, but you're still helping to grow the game and helping uh, you know young football players? Hundred percent. How did you um? So how did you meet your wife? You said her name's Ashley. Yeah, we met in college. Yeah. How did you know uh, she was the one? So. Um, you know, we we met at, she didn't go to Tennessee, she, uh, she went to University of Virginia, and uh, we met there, and I was a freshman, and kind of agreed to have a, kind of a date later in the year, and uh, just kind of went from there, you know, dated all through college, and. Honestly, uh, I say that all the time, like, it's, it's ideal to meet the girl earlier on, like, you met her in college, you said, before everything. Right. That's the yeah. problem nowadays, is like, <laughs> you, you, like. You make it, and then it's hard to figure out and navigate that. So I get that. Lucky. I get that. Yeah. No, it's there's no doubt. Uh, everything's changed a lot. You know, with I mean, look, I grew up college football. The majority of my first years in the NFL before social media. Exactly. You know, so you, you, you know you didn't have um, uh, all the different opinions, right? And and comments, and right. And, and look, it, it can affect players, right? They read comments, and it affects, you know, kind of how they feel sometimes about the their playing time or the coaches or whatnot. So it, it was a nice way to play, you know, for the majority of my career kind of kind of without that because it certainly can be a challenge if you don't handle the social media. You don't handle it well. Correct. How do you think yeah, like do you feel like if social media was a big thing back then that would have affected you at all on the field, like the the different comments, pressures that did you somehow kind of like Yeah. No, that? I mean look, uh you know, played in Indianapolis, you know, you grew up there. It's, look, it's not the biggest market, but the media is into it, right? The fans are into it. 
But then like my brother Eli goes to play in New York and that's like, you know, times 25. And so Eli was the one that kind of helped me with that. And he, he kind of, he said, look, Peyton, like, like I used to read the paper after we won, right? You know, everybody likes to read, you know, what they're, <laughs> 100%. They're, look up their name on saying, Twitter. They're after saying the good one. things about you, right? But then when, um, if it didn't go well, you know, I wouldn't read it. And Eli's like, you know, what I've learned here in New York is like, like you don't read it at all. You know, you don't read the good, you don't read the bad, and you just stay even keeled, right? And it just keeps you from going on this roller coaster, right, of, you know, emotional, you know, uh, you know, mood swings and frustrations or whatnot, right? And ultimately, as a, as a player, I think the ultimate question is, are you doing the job that you're supposed to do for your coach, right? I mean, really, anybody else's opinion outside of that really shouldn't factor in to how you're feeling. I always felt like I was my own biggest critic, right? Yeah. If, if a reporter, you know, cr criticized me for my play, it probably wasn't going to be as, as rough as I was already on myself. So I, I didn't feel like that affected me too much. But I think that there's something about trying to stay even keeled, kind of block out the outside noise, especially as you get into big games and playoff games. Hey, let me just focus in on what I need to do and especially what I need to do for my team. 100%. How was it growing up with your with your brothers, Eli? And then you had an older brother too. Who yeah, played. Cooper, yeah. yeah how so. was it growing up with them? Um, and how, how good would your, your older brother have been if he didn't have the, the injuries he had? Cooper was an outstanding athlete, uh, went to Ole Miss uh, as a wide receiver uh, on scholarship. We played together in high school one year. That was a lot of fun. You, know, you grew up yeah. playing in the backyard with your brother, uh, drawing plays in the dirt. Now you get to play on a real uh, football field with him. So uh, had a neck injury uh, there uh, when he was uh, in two days uh, at Ole Miss his freshman year, had to give up his career. That was tough. Uh, he handled it extremely well. It had a big impact on me. Uh, Mike, when I went through my injuries, just Cooper handled it with grace. He had a good attitude about it. And- um, The doctor now, right? So no, I am not gonna tell him that you actually thought he was a doctor because he probably thinks he's, you know, he could do that as well. No, Cook's doing very good. He's got a great family, been very successful uh, in business, and he, he just um, he handled it, right? So uh, it was a fun way to grow up, having two brothers. Uh, you know, you um, got an older brother to kind of look up to and, and, and kind of help me out, and then Eli was five years younger than me, so uh, it was a fun way to grow up. Did you guys have any, uh, I have four brothers, right. four younger brothers. Did you guys have any fights growing up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eli was probably too young to kind of be able to, like play one-on-one -on -one basketball growing up as kids. Cooper and I certainly went at it a little more, but you know we always try to get along uh, kind of in the end and kind of have each other's backs, which I think is a good thing to do with your siblings. Yeah, 100%. Man, so one thing that I've always admired about you is, is um, just your leadership like qualities. You can see it on the floor, you hear about it, you know. It's something that's always, when you talk about Peyton Manning, it's his leadership. Um, what are the leadership qualities you feel like you kind of possessed and how did you kind of get to the point where, you know, you could execute those? Yeah, I mean, I think being, being a leader, look, just because you're the point guard or the quarterback doesn't necessarily automatically make you, make you the leader, right? I think you got to earn kind of being a leader. And um, so, you know, I kind of learned the hard way in college. You know, I, I, first time I got in the huddle, I kind of went in with this rah-rah speech and a bunch of seniors are just like, hey, <laughs> Don't talk. Just call the play. You know, that's all we're going to do. And so, so you kind of learn that. It's a pretty good lesson that you want to earn, I think, the respect of the people that you're trying to lead, right, before you start barking orders and telling them what to do. Um, I think the other thing I, I, I do, at least I thought I tried to do a good job of, is I was, I, was, I was tough on myself, you know, and I was vocal about that, right? If I missed a throw, I would kind of say it out loud, like, hey, that's a, that's a bad throw. That's a horrible decision you know, no excuse. And so I think when my teammates heard that I was tough on myself, that if I was told them, hey, look, you know, this route needs to be 16 yards, right? You're going 14, it needs to be 16. That it was all fair, right? I wasn't picking on anybody because I was hard on myself. And I just believed in getting the little things right, that the little details mattered in a football game, that 14 yards was different than 16 yards. It might be the difference in the incompletion or, or an interception. So. Um, I felt like I put the work in, um, you know, I wasn't going to ask anybody to do anything that I wasn't already doing myself. And so, um, and, uh, you know, I, I felt like I admitted when I, you know, made a mistake through an interception. I thought, you know, I tried to be accountable. So I think that's, those are some of the best things a leader can do is letting everybody know, hey, I'm writing this thing 
with you, and right? Accountability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a picture of you um, with your foot, like either in a hot tub or cold tub. You got <laughs> your, your helmet on. Yeah. You're watching something. Talk about that because. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're you're a detailed person. I think you were injured at that time. Right. Yeah. And I want to I want to know the backstory on that picture. Yeah, I guess it's the all time multi multitasker. You know, when you're hurt, it's it's tough because a lot of times the best time to rehab is like during practice, right? You know, you have kind of one on one time uh, in the uh, in the athletic training room, and so uh, the team was out practicing, and um, you know the quarterbacks have an earpiece in their helmets where the coach calls the play into the into the helmet and so I, I wanted to be at practice but I had to uh, do some yeah I had kind of foot problems I was doing cold and ice tub on my foot so I had my helmet on where I could still hear the plays being called I could kind of yeah. kind of visualize the play and I had my iPad where I was you know studying some film you know of the team so yeah multitasking and uh, uh, camera uh, camera caught me <laughs> When I think of like intentionality and like focus and like uh, like in the basketball space, you think of Kobe. You know, you think of um, just his intentional uh, detail. Right. And then in football, like I think of you. Was that besides that level of intentionality? What else do you think separated you kind of from the rest of, you know, quarterbacks, but just players in general? Like, what was the main things that set you apart? Yeah, you know, it's kind of always been like that's kind of hard for me to answer. You know, I always felt like sometimes when a teammate that played with you also went and played for other teams, you know, they could give it a comparison, right? So uh, I never knew if I was doing anything different, you know, than anybody else. Uh, look, I take, I took, I had great respect and appreciation for the cerebral part of the game. You know, I wasn't going to outrun anybody or throw it, you know, 80 yards down the field. So I felt like I had to out prepare them. And I felt like the film study, uh, the communication with my receivers, being a, just having the master knowledge of the playbook, uh, that really helped me, right? So when I got out there on Sundays or Saturdays in college or uh, Friday nights in high school, I felt like I'd kind of out-prepared the opponent, whether I had or I hadn't. I kind of told myself that, hey, nobody has worked harder for me to get ready for this game. That just gave me a little more confidence out there on Sundays. And uh, look, the game of football moves so fast so I don't care how fast you are, how strong your arm is, if you don't understand everything about what you're doing as an offense and also understand what the defense is doing, uh, it, it moves even faster. So uh, that's kind of where I feel like I could get an edge okay. on the competition. Yeah, just the, you know, the mental side of it. Um, I felt like I played, you mentioned those guys, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, like I played with a lot of the same guys for a number of years, right? So we had good continuity. We weren't starting over. I played in the same offensive system, pretty much the same uh, uh, every single year. Denver it changed here a little bit, but you know, Tom Brady played in the same system in New England all those years. I mean, when you're having to change plays for a quarterback every single year, that's hard. That's tough. And so I was fortunate. I had great support system, great coaches to help me, and, and players. We, we played together for a while. So I think all those things kind of helped. Gotcha. So, like, routine-wise, like, specifically, like, obviously you got your game day routine. We have our game day routines. I feel like the off days sometimes are the days where you can, like, gain that extra ground. Right. What would that specifically look like? Like, how much film and how much of that, like, mental work, I don't know if it was meditation, film work, or whatever it was, were you actually, like, doing? Yeah. You know, it's been seven years now, so you're, you're making me go back to, uh, uh, I probably don't have the exact itinerary of what I used to do on, on Tuesdays, but there's no doubt that I was trying to use Tuesdays, which is the universal off day in the NFL, to try to try to get ahead, right? And so um, I was a big believer in watching um, kind of the game film opponents, like their past four games. I was gonna watch those four games and get a good feel for kind of who that team was and what their identity was on defense. And then with the coaches, you know, you, you watch, you know, kind of different film. Um, I watch a lot of film of my, myself, right? I mean, I watch practice hard, watch the game hard, watch we filmed all the individual drills, right? I, I think sometimes you get caught up into, hey, let's try to figure out these great plays to run. They were getting ready to play this team, and all of a sudden your mechanics are off. You know, you're not finishing your throw. You're not finishing your shot. And so it doesn't matter if the play is great if you're not doing your deal. So... 
I'm studying a lot of that. Um, I think, you, and you get into that routine. I, I mean, I think your question is great. I think it's important to have a routine, right? And to kind of write down what that routine is and not just sort of wing it honestly, every single day. Honestly, like for the majority of my life, that's kind of how I've lived, like kind of just like free flow throughout the day. And then I've recently understood the importance of just intentionality. Right. Um, like you said, writing down the routine, you know, waking up at this time, what are you doing at this time? And I've, you still are a very intentional person. Like I'll hit you, I'll, I'll text you, like when can we talk? You'll be like, <laughs> Next Sunday at 11 a.m. Like I'll be free, like 11:03 <laughs> to be specific. Yeah. Do you still live with like that same intentionality and why? Yeah, is that? that like that drives my family crazy. Just so you know, so I, I probably could do a little better on that of being a little more free flowing uh, in the second chapter. But I think that's just you know like um, playing football those years. I mean that's how you just kind of get wired that you look an eight o'clock meeting means it's going to be an eight o'clock meeting, yeah. right? I mean football. You do not want to walk into a meeting at 802 because that's late and everybody's in there so you kind of learn that so you kind of get you know on time and, and you get a schedule so um i feel like it, it it serves you well for the most part like i said it can probably um you know um annoy your family and, and annoy your friends on a golf trip when you know no, no, i said specifically we're going to have breakfast at 707 right? right that's probably a little much but uh you know look i think just trying to be um you know go, goes back to that routine i think it helps when you kind of have have a plan i agree i'm super curious about um your second super bowl with denver that was after your your injuries correct correct um and obviously i've had my own injuries so like i look at that and i'm like he made it all the way back to super bowl status post injuries was there like a lot of limitations in your arm and how did you kind of like work through that you said eli or uh cooper you said helped yeah. you um, well, just you know, just the fact that um, I think when you go through an injury, go through a tough time. I think having a good attitude is, is important. That's easier said than done, right? I mean, you're not going to be super happy that you're hurt and you're not playing, but there's a reason it happened, um, and it's kind of a test. You know, are you going to handle that test? Are you going to pass that test? Um, so I, I tried to, you know, have an upbeat attitude. I think that probably helped and kind of getting over those injuries and kind of healing a little bit that I yeah. was, you know, I had a lot of people help me, teammates supporting me, that, that made a difference. Um, but I think you just learned that you can't, you know, maybe do certain things that you used to do, but you can adjust and still figure out how to do it, uh, I, I think is kind of the key. So, um, you know, was fortunate to um, come here and play and, 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 and like I said, have four years and still continue to deal with some other injuries, you know, when I got here. and had great teammates and coaches, but, uh, you know, I think being, learning to adapt to, you know, at post injuries is important. 100%. You say, um, you feel like there was a reason for it. And I feel like a lot of people, um, when things happen to them, they can't figure it out. They don't even just, they don't have that faith that there was a reason. Do you have like a faith, um, just like in a, in that aspect? Do you, you know? Sure. No, was? certainly. No, I think it's, look, I think it's a great test of your faith. And I felt like when I went through my injuries, look, I was frustrated, I was disappointed, but I felt like it was a good Lord's plan that, hey, uh, you, you know, your neck's gonna have some problems and you're not gonna play this year. And so uh, it's a test, it's a test of your faith, you know, and, and to see if you can kind of trust, trust that it's his plan and kind of a little bit out of your hands. Um, so um, I definitely think that's a part of it. And look, um, going, overcoming adversity, overcoming tough times, if you play, sports long enough, you know, uh, you, that's going to happen and you better learn uh, to do it. And I think having people around you to help you uh, overcome it, you know, is also important. But I think, you know, uh, praying about it and, and kind of having kind of trust in, in, in the uh, man upstairs is playing is, is probably the, is probably the best way to overcome it. Have you always had that faith in God? Like, are, what are you, Christian? Mm -hmm. Christian, yeah. you've always had that? Yeah, yeah, so, sure. So, man, my last question for you is, um, like I said, like you're an idol of mine, Kobe, some of these uh, great, Michael Jordan. What is your way of defining greatness? How would you define it? Because it's, everyone doesn't have the, the physical capabilities to be the best. Yeah. How I, would you define I, yeah, greatness? I don't know. I, I, you know, I probably never really thought about that as much. And, you know, uh, I think you just, I always try to be, you know, football, I, I always like team sports, right? I play basketball. I played golf with my buddies, but never, you know, competed in golf. But 
you know, I always thought, you, like, like, like you kind of had an obligation, if you, if you signed up for the team, to do everything you could to help the team and be your best for the team, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what always just kind of drove me, that, uh, that I knew people were counting on me, right? I mean, in football, that's your teammates, that's your coaches. Look, that's the support staff, you know, the equipment managers, the video directors, you know, when, if you don't play well and they fire the coach, a lot of times they fire, you know, a lot of people along with that, right? So, yeah, I'm not saying people's jobs were counting on me, but I think, you know, people were counting on me. Fans, right? They're, they're invested into the team, and, you know, and the owner who drafted you. I mean, right. I mean you want to, I mean, you want to, like the draft's coming up in the NFL. And uh, I remember when the coach drafted me, I wanted to give our owner, you know, I want to make him proud of his decision to draft me, right? It's, it's right. Uh, when they draft you, it's not really a reward. It's kind of a, hey, we're, we're going to bring you to the team. We expect you to yeah, do some things for 100%. us, right? And I think that's a good mentality. Um, and so I guess that's what I, that's what I thought about. So I never used the word greatness in, in describing myself or was necessarily thinking about that. I was just thinking about I wanted to do – do my part, right? For, you know, for the team, and I think that's why I worked really hard to try to try to do that. And whatever came along with that, you know, it wasn't all perfect. Uh, we had certainly disappointing losses and you know, heartbreaking moments. But I think you're you kind of learn how to handle that, and maybe you come out of it stronger on the other side. Well, man, appreciate you, bro. Like I said, it means a lot that you would even make the time to come over here and do this with me. Um, yeah, I appreciate you getting on the podcast, my man. Hey, you bet. Thanks for having me. Good yeah. luck. Good luck in the playoffs. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. It's a wrap. Dreams MPJ. Go watch three plays and get Peyton Manning's perspective on these plays. <laughs> if I remember. No, that's a, <laughs> it's, a minute, it's definitely a minute ago. All right, let's go. I do remember that play. That was the first play of the game. I was down in New Orleans. We lost that game. The guys got Marcus Pollard. It was a good good teammate of mine, good buddy of mine, but yeah, you, you don't throw many touchdowns on the first play of the game. Usually you call them a play to try to get a completion, right? And just kind of, kind of had the perfect play at the perfect time called and he took it for 80 yards. So 80 uh, yards first play of the game. Yeah, exactly. That's tough. Th Wait, this was against Baltimore. Uh, this was an interesting scenario that the Bronx, Baltimore won the Super Bowl year before and they didn't get to open up at home because of like a scheduling conflict with their baseball team in town. So they had to come. Yeah, I was smacking them though. They had to open their, uh, defend their title here in Denver. And so, uh, uh, which probably wasn't fair, but uh, yeah, that was a, just a go route to Demarius Thomas, who, uh, God rest his soul, we lost uh, last year. He's my, he was my good buddy. And uh, it, it wasn't, that's more on him than me, Mike. That's just throwing it up to him, letting him, letting him was do he his tall? thing. Was so, he, was he yeah, tall? he's a big guy for sure. We're, we're all the way at 49. We need to go to the, to the top. Yeah, these are, these are outdated now. This was at the time to break the all-time touchdown record. I think Breeze and Brady have broken them, broken that record several times uh, since then. So, oh, really? But uh, at the time, uh, Brett Favre had the all-time touchdown record, and, and so that pass was to break it. But what I liked about it is, it, is, that, we, is that we won the game. Uh, you know, we, we weren't doing anything just to try to build a record, right? Uh, did that get tipped? Kind of a close game. No, I threw a lot of wobbly passes, Mike. Oh, did you? It just looked like they got tipped, but I appreciate you uh, <laughs> asking that. Uh, no, so that was cool. Yeah, I mean, it was still in the second quarter, so we broke the record and kind of got that over with and went on to win the game. But uh, I love quarterbacks. And yeah, I got, they played keep away with me from the football <laughs> afterwards. So uh, this is in the Super Bowl. This is... Uh, against the Bears, and uh, uh. Bears actually uh, kind of screwed up the coverage. Uh, the, he was he was pretty open. I, it was a matter of kind of getting to him, so uh, down in the rain, down in Miami, so that's always a fun one to watch. That was, the, you know, first championship for the uh, for the Colts, so it was fun to be a part of that. Uh, first championship for Indianapolis, uh, so that was fun to be a part of that. Dope, man. Appreciate you. Legendary, top 50 legendary plays. Appreciate you, my guy. You got it, man. Appreciate my it. Man. Thanks for, for having sure. me. Yes, all right, sir. man. All the best.